Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at dividend preference and the book value per share. In a sense, they are related and you will see how in a moment. This topic is covered in intermediate accounting as well as the CPA FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, audit, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including CPA questions. On my website, you have access to additional information such as PowerPoint slides, notes, exercises, 2,000 plus CPA questions. So let's go ahead and talk about dividend preference. So what is dividend preference? Well, first of all, who get the dividend preference? Only the preferred shareholders. Simply put, the preferred shareholders, in contrast to the common stockholders, they get their money first. They get their dividend first. So let's go ahead and work an example to see how the, the dividend preference works. So let's assume in 2017, M Company is, is to distribute 50,000 shares as cash dividend to its outstanding common stock, have a par value of 400,000 and to its 6% preferred stock that has a par value of 100,000. Now, before we proceed, there's an important term here we need to be familiar with. The preferred dividend, they know how much they're gonna be getting per share. The dividend rate is stated. So this is the dividend rate. So they know they're gonna be getting 6% per, per, per par value, which is $100,000. What does that mean? It means every time we pay dividend, the preferred shareholders get their money first, which is 6% of 100,000, they get paid $6,000. What does that mean? It means if we're distributing $50,000, $6,000 will go to the preferred and the remaining 44,000 will go to the common, okay? So if the preferred is non-cumulative and non-participating, so simply put, it's the regular preferred, here's what's gonna happen. $6,000 will go to the preferred, and what's left is 44,000. 44,000 goes to the common. So simply put, the preferred gets 6,000, the common get 44,000. So this is a dividend, a preferred dividend, that's non-cumulative and non-participating. Now we're gonna take this example. So if you don't have the PowerPoint slides, copy this data down. So we have, just gonna, just wanna let you know, we have 400,000 of, common stock and we have 100,000 of preferred stock and those preferred stock are paying 6%. Let's take a look. Let's change the scenario a little bit. Same scenario. Let's assume the preferred is cumulative but non-participating. And Mason did not pay dividend on the preferred in the preceding two years. So in this situation, we have a preferred situation which is cumulative. Cumulative means if we owe you any prior years, we have to pay you those prior years first. And we are, they're telling us we are two years behind. Well, what does that mean? We have $100,000 in preferred stock times 6%. So every year we are responsible for paying $6,000. $6,000 times 12 times two equal to 12,000. So this is what we call dividend in arrear. Okay, so we, this is for year, the prior two years. Now we have to pay the current year, which is also 6,000. So simply put, the preferred get 12 plus 6, which is 18, and what's left of the 50, so if this is the 50,000, 18 goes to the preferred, and 32 to the common. And 12,000 for the prior years, 6,000 for the current year, anything left goes to the, goes to the, uh, goes to the uh, common. Okay, let's change the scenario a little bit. Again, we're working with the same scenario. Now let's assume that the prefer is non-cumulative, but it's fully participating. Now we have to understand what's fully participating. Fully participating means the common and the preferred, they shared the same rate. What is the rate? Well, the rate is 6%. Remember the rate is the 6% because the common don't have a rate. What does that mean? It means first we're gonna pay the preferred the preferred shareholders, they're going to get 100,000, the par value times 6%. They get $6,000. The common shareholders, they're going to be sharing, participating using the same rate times 6% equal to 24,000. So the first thing is from the 50,000. So from the 50,000, we're going to distribute now six to the, pre six to the preferred 
and 24 to the common. That's the first stage. Now, guess what? If we paid 50, guess what? We still have $20,000 to distribute. How are we gonna How are we gonna distribute the $20,000? Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna have to find the rate for the. For, we have to write the. Per, we have to find the participating rate. How do we find the participation rate? Well, we're gonna take this amount. What's left? $20,000, and we're gonna divide it by the total equity, common and preferred. Common and preferred. We have preferred 100,000 and common 400,000. So 20,000 divided by half a million, that's going to give us 4%. What does that mean? It means for the remaining 20%, 4% goes to the preferred and 4% of the remaining goes to the common. What's left is 20,000 times 4% and I'm sorry, not 20,000, sorry, 100,000 times 4% and 400,000 times 4%. So for the first is 4,000. For the second allocation is 16,000, total of 20,000. Okay, so let's go through the second allocation. So simply put, 4,000 goes to the preferred, 16,000 goes to the common, total 20. So 4,000 to the preferred, now the preferred have 10,000 in total and the common has 40,000 in total, and we distributed in total $50,000, okay? Let's change the scenario a little bit. Again, the same sets of data. And let's assume if the preferred is cumulative, it's a cumulative and fully participating now. So it's a cumulative and fully participating. Well, if it's cumulative and fully participating, now we have to find out if we are any if we owe them any year, any prior years. Well, the preceding two years we owe them. Well, what does that mean? Remember, for every year, 6,000. Therefore, upfront, we have to pay them $12,000 for the two preceding year. Then we have to pay, remember, after we pay the 12,000 from the prior example, we pay 6,000 for the preferred and 24,000 for the common, and that's based on the 6% rate. Then what's left now, let's see how much left. So we have 50,000, because now we have to find the new participating rate, minus 12,000 for the preceding two years, what's called dividend in arrear, minus 6,000 for the preferred, minus 24 for the common. What's left is eight, whoops, let's wait, what's left is 8,000. Now we're gonna take the 8,000, divide the 8,000 by half a million, which is the common and the preferred, and we'll get a 1.6 participating rate. Now the 8,000, we're gonna take the 8,000 times 1.6, I'm sorry, I, I, do, I always do this, 100,000 times 100,000 times 1.6, and 400,000 times 1.6%. So this is the preferred share, and this is the common share. Let's take a look at the math now. 12,000 for the preferred. We have to pay them first up front before we do anything. Then the participating rate is the first allocation is 6%. 6% times 100,000 is 6,000. 6% 6 times 400,000 is 24,000. What's left is 8,000. 8,000 divided by half a million give us a rate of 1.6. 1.6 times 1,000 is 1,600. 1.6 times 400,000 is 6,400, okay? Now, this is the total for the preferred, 19,600. The total for the common, 30,400. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is the book value per share. Now, what is the book value per share? Here's what I want you to think of the book value per share. Look at the, look, we have assets. We have assets equal to liabilities plus equity. Now, in, not, theoretically, everything in the equity, everything in the equity belongs to the common share holders. Everything in the equity, because the equity is the net asset, is the ownership. So everything in the equity belongs to common shareholders, unless, unless I'm gonna change the color, unless we have preferred stock. If we have preferred stock, we have to deduct anything 
that related to the preferred. And what's what's anything related to the preferred? The preferred itself minus any dividend we owe the preferred or any dividend in arrear or if there's a call price for the preferred, okay? And anything left, so total equity minus the preferred related is what's left for the common share holders. It's what's left for the common shareholders. Let's work an example to see how this works. Okay, so the book value per share is computed as the net asset, net asset is assets minus liability or equity, divided by outstanding stocks. The computation becomes more complicated if the company has preferred stock. It's not really more complicated, just we have to take the preferred stock into account, deduct the preferred stock. So let's take a look at an equity section. In Here's an equity section. Here's the total stockholders equity. And the total stockholders equity is $900,082, which is the total preferred minus plus the common stock. Okay. The common, remember, the common, the common has common stock, everything else except the preferred retained earning, everything else goes to the common except the preferred. Okay. What does that mean? It means this, this is what belongs to the common because this is the preferred this is the preferred component. So total. this is total equity, 900,082 is total equity, but we have to deduct from total equity 300,000. What's left for the common is 600,000 and 82 dollars. Well, if we have, if we have 4,000 shares, well, we'll take 600,082 dollars, 600,000, $82 divided by 4,000 shares and the book value per share equal to 150.02, 150.02. So this is how we compute the book value per share. Now, what does it mean, the book value per share from a business perspective? It means based on the book value of the company. Book value mean, means based on historical cost, based on the accounting record, the company is worth $150.02. Now, in the real world, so this is just in the real world, what happened is this. There is a measurement that basically you will take the book value of the stock and you multiply it by a number, by a multiple, like five, okay? By five, and you will find the fair market value, find the approximate fair market value. For example, for restaurant business, if their book value is $20, the stock price should be $80. We multiply it by four. I'm just giving you an example. So this is how the book value is used. It's basically to value the company. So this is how much each stock is worth today based on the accounting record. It's the book value. The book value is the accounting record. Now, the higher, the better, assuming you have, you know, your far, fair market value is a multiple of the book value. Okay. Let's take a look at uh, maybe one more example. Now, assume the same fact, except that the that the 5% preferred is cumulative. Now, now the preferred is has a 5% rate, is cumulative, participating up to 8%, and that the dividend is three years in arrear. So now we have the preferred, we're gonna assume that the preferred here, let me go back here, so it is 5%. So we're gonna assume is this. This 300,000 is, is cumulative. First of all, first of all, let's find out how much do we have to pay per year. Per year is 300,000 times 5%, 300,000 times, 300,000 times 5% is 15,000. So we have to pay per year 15,000. Now what happened is this. Now we are three years behind. So for the dividend in arrear, we owe them 45,000. Then we have to pay them 15,000 for this year. Okay. We have to pay them 15,000 for this year. Okay, what else do we have? What else are we told in this problem? And it's fully participating, fully participating. Fully participating means they're going to be getting an additional, oh, they're, actually they're giving us the rate. Fully participating up to 8, up to 8%. Up to 8% means we're going to pay them an additional 3% because 5 is the regular rate up to 8%. They can, they, they can get up an additional 3%. Well, what is an additional 3%? 300,000 times 3% is 9,000. Again, this also goes to the preferred. Okay, this goes to the preferred. So we have the dividend in arrear, 45,000, current year dividend, and the participating, 9,000. And 
the dividend itself is 300,000. Okay, now what does that mean? It means, remember, we have, let me erase this, we have total equity, let me change the color, come back here, we have total equity, remember, our total equity is 900,000. $82. What we have to do now is deduct all of those, all of those, and what's left is the common share. What's left is the common share. This is what we have to do. So, what does that mean? It means it's the 300000 plus 45000 for the dividend in arrear at a rate of 5%, current year 5%, 3% participating. So, all of those, so 300000 plus those figures equal to 369. Now remember, when we take 900,000 and 82 dollars minus 369,000, let me just make sure this is correct. So 900,000 minus 369. Yeah, well, I did, I did not use the 82. Yes, it's 531.82. It means this is the amount, the net amount, that belongs to the common share holders. Now we'll take this amount divided by 4,000 shares. Obviously, the book value goes down. Why does the book value goes down? Because the preferred, we owe them more money. That's why the book value will go down. The book value is $132.77. Now, if you have any questions about this topic, please email me. Um, again, I strongly suggest you visit my website for additional lectures, and uh, I strongly suggest you subscribe. It's an investment in your career. This topic is covered on the CBA exam. Study hard, and good luck.